life here is love vast as the ocean. Okay? Yes. Are you okay, Shepard? Okay. Okay. Here is love as the ocean, loving kindness as a flood. When the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood. Who is love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days. Grace takes my sin, calls me friend, paid my debt, completely love, rescued me, seated at me. open deep and wide through the flood gates of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide <clears throat> grace and love like mighty rivers poured in and from above and hands peace and perfect justice kiss the guilty world in love takes my sin, calls me friend, paid my debt, completely love, rescued me, seated at me, with my King forevermore. Let me all your love accepting, love you ever all my days let me see your kingdom only and my life be to your praise you alone shall be my glory nothing in the world i see you have cleansed and sanctified me god himself has set me free my sin, calls me friend, paid my debt, completely love, seated me, seated at me, with my King forever, the grace takes my sin, calls me friend, paid my debt, completely love, rescued me, Thanks, and you now we'll have a, a second hymn. Right, the next hymn is 1924. One Jesus, nine two four. Jesus, my King, my wonderful Saviour. 1924. Okay. Yes. Jesus, my King. My wonderful Saviour, all of my life is given to me Thee. Now I am living in Your great salvation. Your precious blood is making me free. Wonderful Saviour, wonderful Saviour, You are so near, so precious to me. Freedom from sin, a oh, wonderful story. All of its stains wash whiter than snow. 
Jesus has come to live in his temple all of my days. His love I will show. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, you are so near, so precious to me. Jesus, my Lord, I'll ever adore Thee. Lay at Your feet Your treasures of love. Lead me in ways to show forth Thy glory, ways that will land in heaven above. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, You are so near. Precious to me, wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, my heart is filled with praises to Thee. When in that bright and beautiful city, there I will see Your travelries untold. I will be like You. My wonderful Savior, I will sing praise while ages unfold. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, you are so near, so precious to me. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, my heart is filled with praises to thee. Did we sing, Jesus my Lord, thou ever adore The last two verses, Jesus my Lord. Jesus my Lord, I'll ever adore thee. Lay at your feet your treasures of love. Lead me in ways to show forth thy glory. Ways that will land in heaven above. Wonderful sight. Wonderful Savior, you are so near, so precious to me. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, my heart is filled with praises to Thee. When in that bright and beautiful city, there I will see. Your glories untold. I will be like you, my wonderful Savior. I will sing praise while ages unfold. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior, you are so dear, so precious to me. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Savior. Thank you, Angie. Just before I pray, I think everyone will be aware, of most, if not all, that Tom has been unwell this morning. So we'll, we'll pray for Tom. Uh, let us pray. Father, we lift our hearts in thanksgiving and blessing and praise to your holy name. Oh, we thank you again for the Lord's Day. Thank you for this glorious day. I was just saying to Irene Lord earlier, the, or outside the lockdown, the Lord's Day is full of sport activities, this activity, that activity. But today, because of the lockdown, it's so peaceful and so quiet. And Lord, we just pray for a great revival. Hallelujah! That would bring this nation back to what it was once, a biblical God-loving nation, and the Lord's Day was a sanctified day. So we thank you, Father, again for your wonderful person. 
thank you and we bless you for the gift of your son. Thanks be unto God for your unspeakable gift. Thank you and bless you and praise you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and Spirit of the living God. Oh, Father, fresh on us today, just pray wherever the word of God is faithfully proclaimed. Pray for the coming down of the Spirit of God in power. Hallelujah to the glory of God. And we just pray, Lord, we just pray that we know one or two people like Robert are obviously not involved just now. Just pray, Lord, you'll bless them and in his home at this time. And again, that everything will go well for tonight eh, for Robert to bring the word of God. Just again, pray for Tom. Just pray, Lord, for your healing touch upon him. Oh, we just pray, Lord, for a miracle for him that would see him healed completely and rejoicing in the Lord and any others who need our prayers. So, Father, bless the word of God to us this day. These things we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. Well, obviously, the intimations is, uh, goes without saying that I'm taking the service this morning. I, God willing, Robert, uh, tonight. Now, if anyone could tell me, particularly Gary, is there a half three meeting still on for, for uh, the sick? Yeah, uh, I, I think so. You think? Well, it's at half past three. Half three, yeah. Right, to pray for, pray for it. That, that's fine. And the service tonight uh, will be Robert. Well, let's say, uh, take up the word of God. And we'll look at a very, very well-known passage. We'll read the first eight verses of Matthew 17. Matthew 17. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, bringeth them up into an high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Will he yet speak? Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard that they fell on their face and were sore afraid, and Jesus came, and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Amen. And God, what a blessing to the reading of his word. What well, a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we bless you for the word of God. Father, thank you and we bless you for the inspired scriptures. And we thank you for all these wonderful truths. Uh, that we can read in the word of God. Thank you and we bless you. But we just pray. Pray for the anointing of the Spirit of God. Pray for the unction from on high. Father, without unction, I, I can preach. I can preach. I can share biblical thoughts, beautiful thoughts, because beautiful thoughts, not because they're mine, but because they're biblical. But Father, we're looking at a looking at a passage of Scripture where uh, it was an outstanding scene of the glory and the majesty of Almighty God, and we just pray to Thee, Lord, in some way, uh, as I share the Word of God, that we'll feel the glory of God coming upon us. We'll share the glory. Hallelujah. And these things we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. Turning again to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 
17. And I'm, I'm going to have a look at the passage in six, he uh, beg your pardon, in five headings. But before I, I, I do that, I want to direct your attention just to, uh, to two words, uh, which is the last two words of our scripture, or eight verses, our last two words. And they soon saw no man save Jesus only. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you, Lord, again for your love and goodness and kindness. And, uh, brothers and sisters, I just bust into prayer there. I wasn't too sure I was preaching or praying. Sometimes you just, I, just, I was actually praying there. I just burst into prayer. Uh, I, 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 and the thing is about Jesus only. We've got this lockdown just now. But you know something? Wherever we are, we've got Jesus. Hallelujah. Eh? Jesus in our homes. Uh, uh, and something more important. What is it? Jesus in our hearts. Hallelujah. Jesus in our hearts. We can well understand why Peter. Peter was wanting to hold on to the experience. We can well understand. We can well understand that. Uh, and uh, we might have been said the same things as Peter said if we'd been there on the mount with Christ uh, himself. But my friend, sometimes we can be even good experiences. Thank God for all our experiences. And if we are spiritual experiences, they are good experiences, but we can't always live in the mountaintop. We can't always live with our experiences. <laughs> Sometimes, I think, looking back in Zion Baptist Church, that uh, no, it wasn't the pastor's fault, but the congregation just got too experience conscious. Uh, uh, and the problem was that in regards to spiritual experiences, as, you, as soon as we use the word spiritual, we're, engage, we're, we're, we're engaging the Holy Spirit. And of course, all spiritual experiences should make us uh, more like Christ, more like Christ. But here's the beautiful thing too. You might be sitting in your home uh, today and you're unconverted. But you know something? You could get saved in your home. Why? Because my friend, we don't need to go to church buildings. That's why one or two people, like I think Peggy, maybe others, they were converted to open ears, converted outside church. But we don't need regular church services. Why? Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Uh, and if you're unconverted this morning, I'm just praying that you will find Jesus only. Hallelujah. Trust him as your Lord and as your Savior. It's Jesus only. Why? Because there's only one, only one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so I'm praying, I'm praying, uh, I'm praying that if anyone is unconverted and within earshot, we just pray that this will be the day. Sitting in your home, my friends, you'll repent of your sin, trust Christ as your Savior. Uh, and in regards to the lockdown as well, well, Jesus only, my friend, we can be sanctified while we're in our homes, longer periods than usual, but we can find uh, Christ only, Jesus only, and that's the wonderful consolation of having, well, having the, the lockdown, of we'll Jesus only, and, we, and if we, Jesus only, Oh, my friend, we'll get everything. We'll get, we'll get everything in Jesus. Now that brings us then, that brings us to the five uh, points I'm going to look at uh, as we come back to Matthew chapter 17. And the first point is uh, the choice, choice that our Lord made. After six days, Jesus taketh take Peter, James, and John. Why? Why Peter, James, and John? I, I know myself, well, they might have been a bit crowded up there if he took the 12, apart from the fact that Moses and Elijah appeared, but why, why 
why the three, Peter, James, and John. Uh, uh, and when, uh, when you're in a situation, this particular situation can be a, a delicate situation. Why? Because the nine down, the back down, still down there, they've got to accept, they've got to accept that why they weren't chosen uh, to be taken up the mount into this beautiful experience. Why? Why they were not chosen. Uh, uh, and sometimes, my friend, that can cause, it didn't cause any trouble here. It didn't cause any trouble here. But sometimes that can cause, you get, uh, that the Lord exalts someone, the Lord lifts up someone to a position, and maybe in the Christian church, and before we know there's jealousy, and why did that person get, why did that person get, uh, used by God, why did God uh, appoint this person to that work, why not me? Oh my friend, envy and jealousy, all flesh is, all flesh is despicable. Sometimes envy and jealousy when it comes into the word of God. When, I, when I've read the history of revivals, sometimes it's been envy and jealousy that's just Quench the spirit. Murray McShane, uh, the minister of the uh, minister of St Peter's up in Dundee. Uh, if you know anything about him, you'll know that with a few friends he went to the Holy Land. Uh, uh, and uh, while he was there, an outstanding uh, young creature, uh, Burns William Chalmers Burns, uh, took over. And while while uh, Robert McShane was in the Holy Land. There was a great outpouring of the Spirit of God, a great revival. But when Robert McShane came back, oh, there was all kinds of, there was people going up to him and saying, just to let you know, I was converted under the ministry of William Chalmers Burns and not under your ministry. Same thing over in, uh, over in the Azusa Street revival, great revival and outpouring of the spirit and then envy and jealousy and uh, at the end of the day in breakaway groups and all the rest. Oh my friend, let's guard against the flesh, get guard against envy and jealousy. At, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, my friend, think of, think of uh, Joseph. You see, these are delicate situations. Take Joseph singled out by God uh, 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 for a special blessing, special role, favoured by God, favoured by his father, but not favoured by his brothers. Oh no, they envied him. They envied him and envy to, uh, became hatred. And you know the story uh, of Joseph, my friend. You know, you know the story of Joseph. Uh, and situations I, I i remember i said to you i hope we lost a family in zion baptist church why because the vote for a new deacon the husband wasn't chosen and we lost a family walked out walked out and took them particularly the wife took a rage out in the pastor that wasn't too fair considering that the pastor chooses it the deacons no my friend no but you see have a look over uh, and Look nine for a moment. Uh, look nine. Verse uh, 53. I'll tell you why I'm, I'm looking at this. If we ask the, suppose we do ask the question, why was it? Why was it, my friend, that Christ singled out Peter, James, and John? Was it because they were more sanctified? Was it because they were holier? I don't think so. Because look at uh, Luke 9, it came to verse 51, when the time has come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, sent messengers before him to the Samaritan village. 
verse 53, and when they did not receive him because his face, he would go to Jerusalem. What James and John, and when his disciples, James and John, they said, Lord, let, let's call them fire. Let's consume them off the face of the earth. He turned and rebuked them. He said, you, you don't know what manner of spirit you are. You don't know. You don't know what manner of spirit you are. Uh, 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 and my friend too, uh, look at Pete, so it's on the same page as my Bible of chapter 17, Matthew 16, uh, verse 22, Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from me, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, you are an offence unto me. For thou savourest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So my friend, it wasn't because that Peter, James and John were more sanctified than, than the rest, as we can see from these two scriptures. So of grace, my friend, uh, uh, if the Lord chooses Peter, James and John to take them up a mountain with them, it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God that saved us and any blessings that God Okay, I know there's instructions in the word of God that God will exalt the humble. That's true. God will exalt the humble. But it's all of the grace of God eh, as to who God blesses, to who God favours at particular times. And that brings us, eh, that brings us my friend, to eh, Matthew 20. Matthew 20. Now here's a different situation. Matthew 20. And verse 20, well, this is a different situation. This annoyed the disciples, but this was just family flesh. Then, verse 20 or Matthew 20, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping and design a certain thing. And he said unto her, What will thou? She says, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the right hand and the other on the left. And my friend, that's just, she was just promoting family flesh. And uh, verse 23, you shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism. But to sit in my right hand and on my left, it's not meant to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it's prepared. And when the ten heard that they were moved with indignation against the two brethren, it was just fleshy against the two brethren, although their mum seemed to be the, uh, behind, behind it all. That's a different situation again, my friend. Not looking for, don't, don't, we don't want family flesh in the house of God. Don't want to promote my family just for, the, just for the sake of that. But you know something, coming back to Matthew's Gospel and chapter 17. Uh, what about the communion now? There's something missing here. You see, in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, there's parallel passages. And sometimes, sometimes you look, my friend, you'll read, Matthew's account. Now, there's nothing in Matthew's account that would uh, contradict Luke 9, where there's a parallel account, or Luke 6, where there's also a parallel account. They don't contradict each other. But sometimes there's details in one that's missing on the other. And the reason why I'm using this word communion, look over to the parallel passage now, Luke 9. And that gives us tremendous enlightenment, my friend, that Matthew doesn't give us. Luke 9. And it came to pass about uh, eight days after these sayings, he took Peter, John, and James and went up into a mountain. What? To pray. And as he prayed, oh, my friend, that's missing in Matthew. Do you see the glory, the, the whole thing, the glory, my friend, the blessing from heaven? How, when did it come in Christ? As he prayed. As he worshipped, my friend. Oh, as a, I think, a, Luke 6. I, I'll read this for you. Sometimes, and rightly so, we read books on prayer like E.M. Bounds and different people. Look at the prayer life of Christ, Luke 6 and 20. It came to pass in those days that we went out into a mountain to pray. 
and continued all night in prayer to God, or our prayer line. This is the beautiful thing, my friend. The beautiful thing. When was Christ transfigured? In an attitude of prayer. In an attitude of worship, my friend. Do you want the glory of God to come down on yourself? Pray. Just looking at a little hymn here. It's one of some. Holy Spirit, move within me. Holy Spirit, come upon me now. Holy Spirit, lead me to the secret place of prayer. Manifest the glory of... You want a manifestation of the glory of God today in your house? I'm not saying you're going to have... I'm not, I'm not saying you're going to have a transfiguration uh, to the degree that was on that particular mountain with Christ. But I'll tell you one thing, you can have the glory. Hallelujah. You can have it in your house. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, we desire you. Holy Spirit, worship through us. But let us see the glory of God. Who wants to see the glory today? Who wants to see the glory right now? Who wants to feel the glory? Oh, my friend, make sure, make sure, my friend, you spend as much time as you can you know i don't know about you but i know that generally speaking in the nation just now there's a, a restlessness now that restlessness is understandable in people there's a restlessness because there's a lockdown and that lockdown uh, brings a, a, a type of a, a kind of restlessness in, into people's uh, minds over the past few weeks, I feel, I, I feel a restlessness myself in my spirit. I feel this restlessness. And you know, my friend, I know there's only one way. I, I know that I, I can get uh, satisfied that restlessness. What is it? Communion with God. Communion with God, my friend. I just feel it. I feel this restlessness. I feel... I feel this restlessness, my friend, eh, and I know it's with my spirit seeking God. And I know that only God can fulfill this restlessness I feel within me. Because as I said the last time I preached, or maybe prayed, I, I don't want to be the same Jack Bell that came into the lockdown. No. I want to I want to go this lockdown, God willing, with a deeper walk eh, with God. And oh my friend, pray for the glory. Pray for the glory to, to come down. Even just now as I'm preaching. You say, how do you feel the glory, Jack? Well, the glory comes in different ways. I can only share my my own my own feelings. Sometimes when I pray or sometimes when I sit at the piano and uh, I, I worship, I just feel the hail will come down. You say, what's the hail? Well, that's something the pastor used to preach and brought us into the, the hail of glory coming down. You've seen religious paintings of, uh, for a better, better example, <laughs> for a be better example, not the best, but Christmas cards. You'll see photos of Mary, Joseph, uh, and the baby Jesus, and you'll see a circle, semicircle of gold around them. Now that's how ancient, uh, that's how the ancient uh, painters painted it, the aura of glory. My friend, that's there for you, the aura of glory. While you're praying, pray for the Holy Spirit. As I said, Holy Spirit, move within me. These are beautiful hymns, my friend. But get beyond the singing. Get into the experience. Ask the Holy Spirit to move upon you to bring something of the glory. And my friend, you may very well feel the halo of glory. You'll feel it coming down and it'll be, it comes down as a weight. There's other ways to feel and share the glory through, through uh, our faces, my friend. But, oh, Prayer, prayer, my friend, is the road to glory. And even during the, even during the lockdown, 
Oh, my friend, we can know the glory of God, glory of God in our house. Just reading a book yesterday in Revival, and uh, the author says, Having a Pentecost in a church can be easier than a Pentecost in the home. <laughs> That's what he said. Having a Pentecost in the church can be easier than a Pentecost in the home. But my friend, we're in a situation just now. We're in more homes, so we've not got any choice. We've not got any choice we're meeting each other in a building. We're in our home. And sometimes that's the most difficult place. And if we've got, if we've got a household salvation, if our husbands and wives and Christian families are, 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 are on our own, this is, my friend, to, the time to pray for the glory to come down and fill our souls. Look at, uh, look at the choice, or look at the communion, and look at the countenance coming back to Chapter six, chapter seventeen, uh, Exodus. I beg your pardon. We'll have a look at what it says. And verse two was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. That must have been something, my friend. That must have been some what a blaze of glory. Eh? What a blaze of glory. Can we touch anything of a blaze of glory? Well, let me ask you, who else? Who else? And it talks about here, Christ's face did shine as the sun. Who else had their face shining in the Old Testament? Or a mountain? Mountain I myself and in the top of Mount Horeb. Moses. I'm not going to look up the scripture, my friend. It's in Exodus chapter 34 on the Holy Mount. Exodus chapter 34. And the word of God tells us there that when Moses came down from the mount from communion with God, his face shone. In fact, as he came further down to reach the children of Israel, he had to cover his face. Such was the glory. Can we have that glory? We can have the. Can we have that glory in our faces? I mentioned about having the uh, the glory coming down uh, down upon us. Can we have that glory in our face? Well, according to Paul in Second Corinthians chapter three, Second Corinthians chapter three, and verse eighteen. Uh, now, earlier, earlier, a few verses back in verse 13, it talks about Moses put a veil over his face. Now, the Lord is that spirit, verse 17, where the spirit of the Lord is liberty. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, a change into the same image from glory to glory. And my friend, by the spirit of God, I'll not be like anything else. Eh? Not with anything else. Not by, uh, not by, well, not by putting any special on their faces. Uh, uh, Christian, if Christian girls and women uh, ever ask me, is it right to put makeup on? I, I just say, well, every little helps. Eh? Every little helps. <laughs> and uh, I think that's, <laughs> every little helps. But this is something that's inward becoming outward, eh, the glory of heaven. You say, where did you get that? Eh, every little helps. Edinburgh Theological Seminary, actually. So there you go, Gary. Eh, every, little, every little helps. No, this is what we've got to pray for. We've got to pray that for eh, our countenances, for the glory of God. I think I might have told you this story before. I was in the Wesley Owen in, in Boyle Street, a big mission now, and an old missionary, Robbie Govier, was there. And he was sitting talking to a, sitting talking to a, a couple, and Robbie Govier wouldn't know me from Adam. Uh, but the, the glory was in his face. It was irresistible. 
Yeah, I know I'm not backward at coming forward, even good people I've never met. Really. I say to myself, I'm going to join the three of them. I'll just say, it's okay if I sit beside you and listen in at this conversation. Why? Glory of God. Now, my friend, that brings us to the conversation back over in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16 and verse 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with them. Now, here again, there's something missing in Matthew's 17 that we find over in Luke's Gospel, chapter 9. Now, all, all it says in Matthew is there appeared unto the Moses and I talking with them. Talking about what? Well, if we turn over to Luke's Gospel, chapter 9 and verse 30, and here we have more detail. And behold, they have talked with him two men, which was Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory, speak of his decease which he should accomplish it. What were they speaking about? The agony that was coming his way, my friend. The cross. Speaking about him about his great passion. His atoning death. That's what they were speaking about. Why do you think they were on, on the mount? Well, my friend, it doesn't necessarily tell you why Moses and Elijah uh, we know that most people will say, well, Moses represented the law and Elijah the prophets. That may be true. Why do you think, why do you think they were speaking about his Christ coming agony? Eh? Well, in Gethsemane, you'll remember, Christ's father, God our father, sent an angel, sent an angel uh, to strengthen Christ. Why do you think Moses and Elijah, what do you think they were, why were they talking about his coming agony? I believe, my friend, they were there to strengthen, strengthen Christ. Strengthen Christ, eh, giving him spiritual and moral support. Uh, as I see it, my friend, I, I believe that's why they were speaking about his coming agony. Giving him encouragement, giving him strength giving him spiritual and moral uh, support, my friend. That brings us to the, to the last thing, the cloud. Uh, coming back to Matthew 16 and verse 5, and will he yet speak? Behold, a bright, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased hear you him. Now, just before I see, and could we go over to Second Peter, which would be a bit of just about our final scripture. Here in Peter's writing his second epistle, he, he takes us into that experience. Uh, verse 17, at Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice, and this is when the cloud came over. From the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Why do you think, why do you think God our Father, Father of Christ, our, our Father and our God, gave Christ this particular experience, my friend? There again, I do believe, I do believe that the Father was shown how, oh, delighted he was with his son how much he loved them, but something else, something else. I do believe, my friend, he was showing Christ the glory, something, a foretaste of the glory, which would be Christ after death and resurrection. I believe that. I believe that that was a foretaste, a foretaste of the glory that Christ would enter into. Uh, and of course, when we come back to a, uh, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This voice which came from him, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Uh, I do believe my friend, God, our father was acknowledging his pleasure in Christ. He's acknowledging pleasure in what sonship, my friend, hallelujah. I believe Christ had a foretaste of his coming glory. 
to strengthen him to this particular time. Uh, I do ask too, why? Why, my friend, for a disciple? Because we're going to get a transfiguration, my friend. Not like that. But we're going to get, uh, uh, this is our final scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. Final scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. And verse 51 and verse 53. Oh, my friend, something wonderful is coming. Eh? Only, only this time. It's going to be permanent. It's going to be permanent. Behold, I show you a mystery. Verse 51. Verse. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment. Twinkling of an eye. The last trump. It's going to be changed, my friend. Changed in what way? Oh, my friend, we're going to have a new, whole new body. Hallelujah. And we'll be filled. What does John tell us? Uh, behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us and that we should be called the sons of God and uh, John goes on to say we're going to see him as he is hallelujah oh how can we put words of appreciation uh, into appreciation for our God eh? Glorious day is coming, my like maybe might be closer than we think. Sometimes might not be the only one, but you look at the you look at this particular uh, the virus that's spread around the world, and you wonder to is it anything to do with any of the signs uh, of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? It could very well be. It could very well be. Not I'm not being dogmatic on that. It could very well be. But you know something? Christianity, glory, all the way. Glory, glory, hallelujah. So I just pray that God will have blessed uh, these thoughts to you. I only wrote them out last night. Never had the chance to even look over them. <laughs> uh, uh, this, the, the, this morning, that shows you always be ready. Uh, always be ready for anything but we give out God all the glory to God be the glory great things he has done <clears throat> and maybe maybe in our homes know something of the power and the glory of almighty God upon us and upon our church and a glory and power that we can carry down the mountain to those who need because Christ has become down the mountain and what was at the foot of the mountain? A multitude. Oh, my friend. Eh, pray. Pray for the glory of God. Amen. Now then, <coughs> Andrew, if we could have the final hymn. <laughs> Mr. Bell, do you want that song, Holy Spirit, Move Within Me, that you mentioned? Yes. I, I put the words in the WhatsApp group if people need them, okay? Yes. Right. So it's 777.
Mr. Bell, you're, you're muted. Well, that's it. That's it. One word of prayer. Oh, Holy Spirit, what we've been singing is the, the longing and desire of our hearts. Father, we know that our Lord remember the reminded the women at the well in John 4. The Father seeks. Who, what, who is he seeking? Those who worship in spirit and in truth. And we thank you and we bless you that we can worship in our homes this particular Father, just thank you for after all the difficulties, the initial difficulties that we had, we managed to have a service on Zoom. And we give you thanks for that. Just pray at three thirty when we have the time of prayer for the, the, the sick. You undertake for us there and just pray again, Lord, tonight as we uh, have the Zoom at six o'clock, that everything will go well for us and that Robert will be blessed as he brings the word of God. So keep your hand upon us for good throughout this day and we'll give you all the honour, praise and glory. Amen.